Morning, guys. Welcome back to the homestead. So the plan for today was to go pick up a trailer from Harbor Freight so we can start building our portable chicken coop. Except every Harbor Freight ever is completely out of stock on that trailer. So I think what we're gonna have to do is rather than wait around until one comes in stock is to try and find a used trailer locally that we can use for this project. I have some messages out to people uh, online to see if anyone's got anything available or, or you know if they wanna negotiate or whatnot. So I should probably explain why a Harbor Freight trailer anyway? Well, to begin with, they're cheap. Number two, it's the perfect size for what we want to do. Four by eight also cuts down on our lumber cost because as we know, everything comes in four by eight pieces of plywood. Studs come in eight foot sections. It just kind of makes sense um, economically to do it in that size. Yes, I know you want to be in the video, Mia. I understand. Thirdly, it has an A-frame tongue on the front of that trailer, which I'd like to utilize for a water barrel storage. I'm going to do like a rain collection system off the roof. Um, and most utility trailers that are four by eight in size only have one single tongue coming out of it. And it's not really adequate support if you want to add anything to that area, in my opinion, anyway. As you can see, I'm driving right now. I managed to find a trailer, uh, which I am towing. And I believe by looking at it, it actually is the same Harbor Freight trailer that somebody just modified a bit. Anyway, trailer acquired. So here it is. That's perfect for what we need. We gotta go through it all. It's got some rust on the front there. So we'll wire wheel it all down and paint it. And go through everything and get it into shape. Probably take all these wood sides off and build on top of it and replace this wood in here. What do you think, bud? Alright, we'll get started on it tomorrow. Alright, so we got our screws, gathered our tin roofing, and all of our lumber. Got the hardware? Yeah. Right, cool. Okay, so another reason I wanted this specific trailer is because I thought that the included stake pockets might make kind of handy places to mount things after the fact. Maybe if I wanted to mount um, feeders, I could have something that would you know go up and hang out. Waterers, etc. Things of that nature. Just might come in handy a lot. All right, so I'm going to start stripping all this down now, getting all this wood off of here, and we'll see what we got to work with. Okay, so there's a double layer of plywood here. It's on pieces. So the wood underneath seems to be um, three-quarter inch thick plywood, and it's in pretty good shape. So I think I'm going to roll with that and keep it. I'll take this top worn plywood off, and... I will take some of these bolts out, and my plan is to put the new piece of plywood down on top of it, give them a fresh floor and a good foundation to build off of, and then we'll take the bolts and we'll come through the new plywood and keep everything bolted down. We'll have our sill plates of our framing walls bolted down and everything. I think that's the way to approach this. When I get these sides off, it'll make things a little bit easier to work. All right, that'll make it a lot easier to get this plywood off. So a lot of these screws are rotted, rusted, and stripped out. Uh, there's about 16 screws per board, so I'm getting some of them out, and it's just enough that I can get a crowbar wedge under here, and I'm able to pry these boards up. But as you can see, most of the screws don't come out at all. They're just coming up with it. That's fine, though, as long as it's coming. But as you can see here, this is kind of what we're working with. <sighs> All right, so it looks like it's pretty much free. Got a good gap there, but we have these three carriage bolts that we have to get down with. So we'll loosen them up from the bottom and see if we can get those unbolted. 
So the backing nuts are all off, but those bolts are kind of stuck in there. So we're just gonna need to persuade them out a little bit. There we go. And that's out. All right, so we've got this pretty well cleaned and swept off. The three carriage bolts I had to replace right over here because um, they actually bolt the trailer tongue down. So those had to go back in. Come here, take this bolt down, Mia. Come here. No? What are you, striking? What we're doing now is we got a new sheet of plywood on top and we're gonna zip it down to the old one, which is still good. And then there are several holes along the frame of this trailer uh, underneath it. It's like a C-channel. So what we'll do is we'll get up from underneath and uh, once we have our, our walls built, our framing, I'll come and I'll drill holes up through the plywood, through the framing, and bolt the walls down so that, you know, if we get strong winds, it can't blow the coop over and whatnot. So I'm gonna go ahead and go get this piece of plywood zipped down. Okay, so we're starting our layout for the first wall. Might look a little weird with this space over here. What we're doing is we're measuring 24 inches on center for these walls. Unlike a home or a structure where people would be in it, you'd want to be 16 inches on center for structural integrity. This is just a chicken coop, guys. We don't have to go crazy and waste the extra lumber. Uh, you know, the average chicken's uh, four or five pounds, so we're not really supporting any type of weight. There's no snow load here to worry about, so this is going to be fine. So we have everything marked 24 inches on center. Here's our mark. There's a mark, but you see no stud when we have this big space in the middle. That's because here in South Carolina, the summer's gonna get really hot and we're gonna have a short stud right here and we're gonna frame in a big window um, that has harbor cloth on it on both sides so we can get a lot of ventilation in here to keep these birds cool. So we've got our first wall here just held on with clamps. We're gonna go ahead and, and screw the sill plate down to the plywood base um, just to kind of hold it in place for the time being. Uh, that won't be permanent. Like I said, we're gonna through bolt everything but uh, this will just serve to get it in place for now. I'm screwing these in on a slight angle just to take up the difference because the screw le length is uh, just about the width of this wood. So I do have enough room to go straight up and down, but I'd rather go on the side just to give myself a little bit of forgiveness. Second wall's up. Gotta do the ends now. So I got the front side wall up. I'm gonna put one more stud in the middle. Um, and then when I do the back side wall, I think I'm going to leave it just a square like this because I'm going to do um, a rear access door, like a clean out door. So I'm not sure how I'm going to frame that all up yet. So we'll just get the four pieces box in and put that end up today. Well, guys, I think I'm going to pause here for the day. I'm pretty happy with the progress so far. Like I said, these two bigger openings, we're going to have windows framed in the top on both sides for some good cross ventilation. And on one of the sides will be um, the nesting box. Um, we'll go around here to the back. I'm pretty much gonna frame in the, the whole thing's gonna be a door and then we'll have the chicken door here. So we can open the door within the door and do you know our clean out. All of our bedding gets swept out this way. Um, and then the, you know, the chicken door will be built into that. Um, anyway, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out so far. So guys, I'm an electrician by trade. I think I'm gonna do a pitched roof on this, but if any of you guys know the actual measurement, not measurements, I mean standoffs right here. If I do a one foot standoff and then I do my ridge beam on top of that, with that height, does anyone know the angle that I need to cut on those um, rafters that go this way? If you do, leave it in the comments below because I have no clue. I'm gonna try to figure it out, but if any of you guys know, I'd really appreciate it. All right, guys, well, Thanks for being with me today, starting the chicken coop build. Uh, tomorrow, we'll either get the roof going or start framing some more of the sides. I'm glad that you chose to spend your time here with me today. And to all these new subscribers, um, I can, I'm just blown away. Evan at Country View Acres, oh my gosh. It, you guys, you and Rebecca, you're awesome. Thank you so much. Anyway, thank you so much for being with me on this journey. And uh, try to come back for the next one when we uh, continue with the chicken coop build. Thanks guys, see you later.